Thank you for coming to this presentation. The title is Focus on Clefts, Aspects of Gradients in Bidialectal Acquisition. I'd like to apologize for not being able to be with you live for this one. So, the aims of the presentation are to explore the concept of gradient by dialectalism by capitalizing on insights from recent developments in second language acquisition and to explore the suggestion that aspects of the syntax discourse interface that are not accessible to the learner may lead to fossilization even at end state. The data that we're going to be looking at come from Cypriot Greek, a southeastern variety of Greek spoken on the island of Cyprus, and more specifically, we are focusing on the acquisition of Standard Greek by Cypriot Greek speakers. And even more specifically, we're focusing on a phenomenon which I have termed residual clefting, i.e. the perseverance of clefts, which are a dialect syntactic strategy, in standard-like production, i.e. when Cypriot Greek speakers are speaking Standard Greek. And we're going to be comparing that to exceptional clitic placement in the immediately preverbal position, which is a strategy, a syntactic structure of standard Greek that Cypriot Greek is now tending to adopt. And the data show that aspects of the syntax of the target variety, which relate to the syntax discourse interface, have strong effects on its acquisition, whereas structural aspects of the target variety, which arguably pertain to narrow syntax, are fully acquired and even seep into the syntax of the first variety. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. So we're focusing on Cypriot Greek by way of introduction for those of you who don't know much about Cypriot Greek. Cypriot is a dialect of Greek that is spoken in Cyprus and it belongs to the same dialect family as the dialects of the Dodecanese, i.e. Rhodes, Kos, possibly Hios, etc. Uh, what is interesting for our purposes is that uh, there is diglossia between Cypriot and Standard Greek. That's the sociolinguistic situation. Standard Greek is the H variety in Fergusonian terms. It's the language of education, the language of the public domain, whereas Cypriot Greek is the language of the home, and it's acquired naturally, whereas standard Greek is somehow exogenous. It's acquired through formal schooling. Um, obviously, together with Baglosia come a bunch of attitudes towards the dialect and the standard, so uh, people call the dialect heavy or peasanty, and they call uh, the standard calamaristic or penpusheries, so in a way an artificial, glib, sort of p p p posh, but also pretentious variety. But people also talk about intermediate levels or registers of Cypriot Greek, so tidied up or polite Cypriot Greek. And these are uh, part of what we're going to be looking at today, or part of the sociolinguistic considerations that inform this study. So what is also interesting for our purposes today is the fact that in our recent research, we have put forward a very strong claim backed up by lots of evidence for the emergence of a Cypriot Greek koine, a variety that is arguably still emergent, but interestingly already still quite coherent as regards central aspects of its phonology and morphosyntax. And as is typical of koine emergence, koinization goes hand in hand with leveling of local sub-varieties, and this leveling, we argue, uh, is taking place or has already taken place to a very large extent as a result of forced population movements and demographic changes post-1974 when the Greek-speaking and Turkish-speaking communities were violently divided and Greek-speaking communities had to move to the southern part of the island. This resulted in the emergence of new social networks, increased contact among different social groups, arguably speaking different sub-varieties of Cypriot Greek, and also later social mobility, internal migration to urban centers, and last but not least, increased literacy in standard Greek, the H variety on the island. So as is well known, with leveling and population movements comes mutual accommodation, and mutual accommodation is a key factor in the formation of a koine variety. 
On top of that, the diagnostic relationship between standard modern Greek and Cypriot Greek is still going strong, as we've shown. The age variety, standard modern Greek, is spreading to domains other than those related to state and education. Language ideologies are going strong. But what is really interesting is that the Cypriot Koine, which we may want to call an intermediate variety in between standard Greek and the dialect, is now emerging as a prestige variety, which may act ultimately as a buffer towards full de dialectalization of Cyprus. So, why is the Koine what people call tidied up or polite Cypriot Greek a variety that carries both overt and covert prestige, i.e. a variety that people orient to either as a local variety or as, or as a pan-Cypriot quasi-standard? Well, the fact uh, is that the Koine is structurally mixed and this is due to prolonged and dense contact with standard Greek. And the nature of the mix is such that it allows for both local and standard-like features to co-occur in what we might call a form of sociolinguistically driven compromise that allows for the survival and the visibility of both varieties. So, as you can see from this slide and the translation coming up in the next slide, people are fully aware that they are speaking a mixed variety that stands in a relationship of mutual intelligibility with standard Greek. And what's really interesting, of course, and it's shown very clearly in this uh, extract from my ethnographic research, is that uh, people think that this Koine, this mixed variety, is part of the Cypriot repertoire, that it's not exogenous, not extraneous to Cypriot Greek, that it is, in fact, a register of Cypriot Greek. So why do we call the Koine a mixed variety? We find um, mixing or use of variants that are standard or standard-like or on the standard Greek side of the Cypriot con dialect continuum, if you like, on all levels of linguistic analysis. So here in this example from phonology, the word for and is pronounced in the standard-like way, ki, in the first instance, and in the Cypriot way with the palatal Africa, ch, in the second instance. And it might be tempting to, to treat such production as uh, code switching, uh, although there is no uh, actual pragmatic or sociolinguistic reason to, to prompt such a switch. This is a narrative uh, produced by one Cypriot talking to another. There's no change in topic, there's no change in the speech act or speaker alignment. So it's uh, if there is, this is code switching, then uh, the reasons for it remain quite uh, mysterious. So we are tempted to just say that uh, both allophones are actually by now part, a bona fide parts of the Cypriot phonological system, including the standard one, so the palatal stop. Yeah. We find similar instances in the morphology. So in this example, uh, in the first example, actually, the speaker is using uh, the... Uh, form this and then the form this for the definite uh, accusative feminine plural determiner. The first one is standard or standard-like, and the second one is Cypriot. In the second case, elavate, we have a, a, a lexical uh, mixing. So the speaker is using uh, e, which is the past tense marker, the dialectal past tense marker, but he is also using ate as an ending, which is the standard Greek past tense ending, rather than ete, which is the expected Cypriot Greek ending. And uh, we come to my favorite part, tenses. Cypriot Greek traditionally did not have periphrastic tenses, or rather periphrastic tenses of this form. So uh, present and past perfect and future perfect with the verb have were absent in the dialect, but now we see people using present perfect more and more. This is a Cypriot speaker who has lived in Greece for about 50 years. He's highly educated. He's using 
a standard like present perfect I have retired meaning I retired last August and I say standard like because in standard Greek this would be uh, ungrammatical because we have a temporal specification for past tense, last August, which would require simple past. So he is using a, a standard-like form, but rather hypercorrectively, or he's using it uh, in uh, the way that it is used and it functions in the Cypriot drama, i.e. as a variant of simple past. This is telling us very interesting things about acquisition and language change. So, uh, past perfect is also very um, common in the Cypriot Greek koine. In this uh, example, from again from my ethnographic research, which is rather X-rated, uh, this speaker is using a past perfect as it is used in standard Greek to denote remote past. So back when she was at school, she had this teacher who had etc. What is really interesting is that she is using uh, a form that is really fully incorporated in Cypriot grammar and phonology, so she's using uh, sh as opposed to h in had, ishen, and she is using, uh, she's producing clitics after the auxiliary, uh, which is the, the standard, uh, the, I'm sorry, which is a Cypriot uh, structure, as we will see in a minute. So a little bit more on the past perfect which is an innovation in Cypriot Greek uh, grammar, arguably. So this young speaker here, who is also highly educated, as was the previous one, is using a past perfect, but its semantics are just plus past, simple past. Because what he means is that he mentioned the research that he had conducted during the interview, not prior to the interview. Uh, what is happening is that this innovative uh, past perfect is used to emphasize focal points in a narrative. What he's really trying to say here is that I did mention the research that I had conducted and still I didn't get the job, right? So we have a standard or standard-like form with Cypriot dialectal, if you like, semantics slash pragmatics. And this is what's going on in the Koine. This is part of what we call hybrid or mixed production. Okay, this is my little joke. Uh, it happens in the best of families. Uh, this is an extract from an interview by our president, president of the Republic, who uses a past perfect in lieu of simple past, and he thinks he's using simple past. Um, I don't have time, I don't think I have much time to go through this, but you can read it and enjoy it in your own time. So to get to the phenomena that we are exploring today, um, Cypriot Greek is or seems to be the about the only Greek variety uh, that has clefts, focus clefts, and also WH clefts. So in standard Greek, if you want to focus and you want to focus contrastively and you want to focus uh, ex situ uh, and you want to also have an uh, exclusive reading, what you do is you take the focused uh, element and you pop it before the verb, as in the first example here. Stavrula, I'm looking at Stavrula Vleto. So in Cypriot Greek, that's pretty much impossible. You have to have a cleft, English-like or French-like. It is Stavrula that I'm looking at. So what do Cypriot Greek speakers do when they're trying to speak acrolectally, when, when they're trying to speak standard Greek? Well, they're still using clefts, pretty much. Uh, so what they might do is they might change the morphology of the verb uh, be this, uh, this construction. Uh, so instead of en, which is a Cypriot form, they might say ine, which is the standard form. Or they might even move the focused item to the left of the cleft, as in the second example with the archbishop. But what they hardly ever do is the Greek strategy, i.e. just moving the focused constituent before the verb and omitting the cleft altogether. So we're going to be looking at pronominal object clitics next. This is another area besides clefts where the two grammars of the two varieties differ radically. 
So in standard Greek, as you can see from the examples here, the clitic, the pronominal object clitic occurs preverbally if the verb is tensed and has an uh, aspect and agreement on it, but basically it occurs post-verbally with imperatives and gerunds. So the placement of the clitic is dependent on tense and finiteness. In Cypriot Greek it's a different story because Cypriot Greek still has the medieval uh, Greek uh, structure. It has vaker nagel or rather tobler musafia clitics. Clitics occur in the second position. Uh, as you can see uh, from the examples that follow, when you have something in the C field or below, then you get the clitic uh, right after that. So after the negation marker, after the mood marker, in these examples. And in these examples as well, you get the clitic uh, right after whatever else is there in the C field or below. But what is happening nowadays in the Cypriot Greek koine is that we get exceptional clitic placement or unexpected proclesis, i.e. we get an object uh, pronominal clitic right before the verb with nothing else preceding it. As in this example, uh, what is really interesting is that the speaker is telling me that he didn't speak the Cypriot dialect in the past but he's speaking it now because back then he considered it a lack of illiteracy. Um, so the whole text is Cypriot uh, and it's kind of hard to consider uh, this preverbal occurrence of the clitic as code mixing because it's again it's very hard to see what kind of purpose uh, the mix uh, would serve so why would the speaker suddenly switch to a standard Greek syntactic strategy involving proclesis a preverbal clitic and then switch back to a verb with full Cypriot morphology verb consider so again, it's very hard to treat these instances as instances of code mixing. Uh, it is very tempting to assume that proclesis is by now a bona fide part of the grammar of the Cypriot Greek koine. And of course, of particular interest are examples where proclesis and enclesis are in almost free variation, uh, in free variation, as in this example here, where to occurs first postverbally and then preverbally. Similar example here, interestingly, with the coordinating conjunction preceding. So, as I've shown, I think, I hope, with these examples from ethnographic research, standard-like or standard Greek clitic placement is seeping into the syntax of Cypriot Greek. Uh, quite the opposite obtains with clefts. Cypriot Greek speakers will use clefts and not the standard Greek syntactic strategy, strategy for syntactic focus, sing, i.e. movement of the focus constituent to the preverbal position. They will rather use clefts and such clefts are of course considered ungrammatical by speakers of standard Greek, mainly because of the lack of agreement between, uh, for example, in this case, the clefted uh, subject and the uh, copula-like verb, which is in fact, uh, the verb to be, which is in fact a form without uh, tensor agreement features. So let's look at some uh, quantitative data now uh, to corroborate this claim. This is from a paper that we published in Lingua back in 2016 when it was cool, let me add. And this is uh, data from sociolinguistic research, from sociolinguistic interviews with quite a significant number of participants with a large age range. We analyzed several variants, for example, two phonological variants. Uh, and uh, one of which was is Cypriot and the second of which is on the standard like if you like side of the continuum 
and we looked at, of course, the periphrastic tenses versus simple past, and we looked at enclysis and proclysis, unexpected proclysis. So we stress that in the sample we did not find a single instance of the standard Greek syntactic focusing strategy. No focus raising, no focus movement. Every single instance of syntactic focusing involved a cleft. So if you look at the last column, the last column describes proclysis, the ratio of proclysis over enclysis in this oral data. Uh, the first three columns have to do with phonological data and the periphrastic tenses that we spoke about earlier. So you'll see that proclysis occurs in oral data from sociolinguistic interviews at a nice hefty 19%, which is not negligible at all. Uh, and I need to say that very similar findings are described in a paper by Evelina Livada, Natalia Pavlou, et al. Uh, but their sample was very small, it consisted of only five people. Um, crucially, very, very similar figures were found by my PhD student Nevanti Papanikola in her very recently completed PhD thesis on unexpected proclysis, and she had a huge sample of 400 questionnaires plus uh, qualitative oral data from sociolinguistic interviews, and the findings are very similar. So proclysis is there. It seems to be becoming well entrenched in the Cypriot Greek grammar, as opposed to focus movement. So Cypriot Greek speakers will use clefts and not focus movement, even when they think they're speaking or writing in standard Greek, and I'll now describe a study that we first started carrying out in 2017 and are now continuing with it but I'm not going to show you the most recent data because that's still in the process of being collected and analyzed. So we did a questionnaire survey testing for the acceptability of focus clefts in standard Greek by Cypriot Greek speakers. So we looked at clefted adverbials, clefted subjects, clefted direct objects, and clefted indirect objects. And these were the uh, subjects of our sample. Quite a large sample, a nice age spread. And most participants were quite highly educated with degrees from tertiary education or higher. Uh, and this is quite interesting because you'd expect that the more educated a speaker is, uh, the more proficient they are in the standard variety. And therefore, uh, the more competence they have in the syntax of standard Greek, and therefore you'd expect them to use standard Greek focus movement or to be aware of the phenomenon. So here are some uh, examples from the questionnaire items. Uh, I have to say that uh, these were run by 12 uh, controls who were speakers of standard Greek and they found all of them ungrammatical, mainly because of the lack of agreement between uh, a clefted subject and the uninflected verb to be in the cleft. So here are our results. Overall, participants accept clefting as a focusing strategy in standard Greek at 53%, but the binomial test indicates that uh, this acceptance rate is significantly different from chance. The odds of males accepting clefts was higher than that of females, uh, so males accepted clefts in standard Greek at higher rates compared to females. So females are better at standard Greek than males are. Uh, I'm only joking, of course. Um, the odds of older subjects accepting clefts was 13.9 that of younger subjects. Older subjects, therefore, accept clefts at higher rates compared to younger subjects. So older subjects think that we cleft in standard Greek. Younger subjects, less so. Quite interestingly, there was no statistically significant difference between subjects of tertiary and secondary education, so education doesn't seem to play a role at all in people's competence or metalinguistic awareness of the phenomenon, if you like. 
place of origin didn't play a role. Type, type of clefted constituent did play a role, however. So um, here are the percentages of acceptance, and they're all quite high. Uh, clefted subjects, uh, if they're third person, uh, are accepted at 68%, and uh, we have a drop if the clefted subject is first or second person, again, because of the lack of agreement between the verb to be and the subject. In third person, superficially, it looks like there is agreement, right? So maybe that explains the higher rate of acceptability, and that shows you ongoing grammatical change in a way, right? And here's what's happening with the rest of the constituents, direct objects, genitive objects, and uh, prepositional indirect objects. The acceptance rate of collected adverbials was significantly different from chance, as was the acceptance rate of clefted subjects in the third person. This was not, however, the case with clefted subjects in the first or second person, which is to be expected. And the acceptance rate of clefted direct objects was significantly different from chance. Uh, what was not significantly different from chance was the acceptance rate of indirect objects, either nominal with genitive or as preposition phrases, so their speakers performed at chance level. Yeah. So here's our question. Why is standard Greek clitic placement seeping into the grammar of Cypriot Greek, but not standard Greek focus movement? Do acquisition factors enter the picture? Uh, what is strange is that the acquisition of standard Greek focus movement is not underdetermined by input in any way, since structures with syntactic focusing are quite run-of-the-mill in standard Greek. In a way, the perseverance of clefting in standard-like production by Cypriot Greek speakers is less hard to account for. Uh, excluding clefting would involve the speakers, the learners, having to focus on negative evidence, i.e. they would somehow have to deduce the absence of clefts in the standard variety, which is the target variety. What might complicate matters a bit more for Cypriot speakers is that Standard Greek has these sort of cleft-like structures uh, that you can see here, which are not, however, bona fide uh, clefts, Cypriot style, with uh, an uninflected form of the verb to be not agreeing with the clefted uh, constituent, which is what Cypriot Greek has. Standard Greek probably has equational structures rather than clefts, uh, uh, but these may be quite hard to tease apart for, for learners, since the third person is quite confusing, because they are superficially they look the same. So the question really is, where does this acquisition deficit vis-à-vis uh, -vis the standard Greek syntactic focusing strategy come from, and why is there no such deficit as regards standard Greek clitic placement? And it's tempting to attempt an account in terms of the interface hypothesis, uh, which stated very broadly and very simply says that adult second language acquisition of phenomena which only pertain to a particular module of grammar i.e. syntax only, for example, is ultimately fully achieved at end state, if not before, but acquisition of phenomena which pertain to an interface, for example, syntax semantics, syntax pragmatics, syntax discourse, is almost never perfect, as has been shown with acquisition data from various language pairs. So what's going on with focus? Well, in Greek, standard Greek, focus movement involves an interpretable focus feature uh, associated with a focus head somewhere underneath uh, C, but higher than I, and uh, the syntactic reflexes of these features involve changes in word order, raising of the focus constituent to focus phrase, and I to F raising, if you believe uh, extant analyses, 
But what is crucial is that these operations need to be mapped onto the relevant information or discourse structures, which in turn involve complex notions such as old versus new, presentational versus contrastive focus, exhaustivity or non-exhaustivity, etc. And so the acquisition of the relevant structural configurations involves aspects of the syntax discourse interface and is therefore predicted to be complex, underdetermined by input, and perfect attainment may therefore be quite hard to reach. In contrast, clitic placement relates to formal operations in the narrow syntax or, depending on the analysis adopted, with operations involving the syntax semantics interface and semantic features such as mood or finiteness, which are internal to the grammar and thus make for less vulnerable L2 acquisition. And let it be said at this point that in terms of semantic features such as familiarity, specificity, etc., Cypriot and standard Greek object clitics are exactly. So, to conclude, speakers of Cypriot Greek do not display native like attainment as regards focus movement, even at end state as is evidenced by the prevalence of Cypriot clefts in acrolectal standard-like production and related acceptability judgments. And the imperfect acquisition of this core area of Greek syntax may be captured by the interface hypothesis and the difficulties for acquisition posed by phenomena at the syntax discourse interface. Exploring and accounting for different levels of attainment in a second related variety along such theoretical lines in turn may yield a richer understanding of bidialectalism as a complex and crucially a gradient uh, concept dependent to a very large extent on the properties of the grammatical uh, phenomena in question. Thank you very much for your attention.